Recently, I've been making quite a lot of uh, cylinder mold soaps using a pull-through through tool to give uh, various kaleidoscope-like patterns. And it occurs to me that some of those soaps look rather like the stained glass window in a cathedral, the, the circular rose window. And so my goal today is to make a soap that will really look like a cathedral window. I'm going to use colors that would be typical in medieval stained glass, so bright red, blue, green, and yellow. And then I'm going to frame that in a black rectangular mold by first pouring the cylinder and then embedding that in a uh, rectangular loaf mold. I'm going to use the same uh, mixture of oils for each of these three batches of soap, and I've calculated it as I normally do with soapcalc.net. So for the cylinder, I'm using a 33 ounce batch. That mold holds about 32 ounces of uh, soap mixture, but because I'm going to be using four different colors, and I may not have time to scrape the pitchers clean. I'm going to add an ounce just to be sure I have enough to fill the mold. And then once uh, that is done, I can uh, scrape the pitchers into, into a small mold and make a travel soap out of the remainder. So I'm using 20% uh, uh, coconut oil, 40% lard, 20% tallow, 4% castor oil, 16% high oleic sunflower oil. I know from experience that that makes a very nice hard bar of soap, but it's also quite slow to harden up while you're working with it. And so that's, that'll be good for having enough time to pour this thing. I'm adding to that two teaspoons of sugar, uh, which will improve the sudsiness, and then also two teaspoons of sodium lactate. Quite important in a cylindrical mold in order to make it easier to get the soap out of the mold when you're done. I'm not using any fragrance in the cylinder at all uh, because I don't want to get any uh, possibility of discoloration. I will be using fragrance in the black frame around it. And then for colors, I'm going to use a bright red, bright blue, bright green, and bright yellow, which are colors that you normally see in a uh, cathedral stained glass window. And all of these micas are from Nurture Soap half a teaspoon of trial by fire, that's a nice bright red, and then a third teaspoon of brilliant blue. For the green, I'm mixing half a teaspoon of force of nature with a quarter teaspoon of chrome green oxide, and that should give a nice clear bright green. And then for yellow, I thought that the lemon drop mica was a little light and the yellow vibrance was a little dark for what I wanted, so I'm going to be mixing those. So that will do the cylinder, the actual window. Then for the bottom of the mold, uh, to get the very bottom of the frame, I'm using a five ounce recipe. Same recipe exactly, except for the size. But I am adding frankincense and myrrh fragrance. This is from Nature's Garden. And the idea there is, since I'm creating a church window, it should smell somewhat like church incense. And then to make that soap black, I'll be using nocturnal mica from Nurture Soap. So what I will do is pour that layer on the bottom, let it harden up enough to support the weight of the cylinder, then put the cylinder on it, and then fill the mold the rest of the way. So the third batch of soap to be made then is that remaining fill for the frame exactly the same recipe as the previous one, but this time using a little over 21 ounces of oils for the size of recipe and increasing the amounts of everything else appropriately. And then that will surround the uh, stained glass window cylinder and give the finished rectangular bar of soap. For the circular stained glass window looking soap, I'm going to use this cylinder mold made of silicone from Essential Depot. And then the pull-through tool is from Wild Plantanica. It is their three-inch center mount bubbler design. It, it looks like the little tool you get 
uh, with a solution for blowing bubbles at a kid's party or something like that. And that fits perfectly into this mold. Then that cylinder is the right size that I can put it horizontally in this loaf mold, also from Essential Depot. Uh, and so as I said with the recipes, all I will do is pour a shallow layer of black as the bottom part of the frame, let that harden, and then lay this cylinder of soap into that and keeping that centered then I'll fill it to the top with the final batch of black batter. So that's the plan. I think I will record pretty much the entire process here, which is going to take a while. And so particularly if you're an established soap maker or if you just get bored, uh, I will put the uh, timings in the description below where you can jump ahead as you like. I probably will edit out the long periods of hand whisking. As I've said in previous videos, I have pretty much switched to using hand whisking entirely. I used to use a, a stick blender a lot, but I was getting too many bubbles in my soap. And Some people are very good at stick blending and not having bubbles. I'm not. So I've gone back to the hand whisk, and that's not all that slow. So I have pre-moistened my uh, colors with uh, some of the Hyolaic Sunflower Oil. And my lye solution is at 110 Fahrenheit. My oils are at 94 Fahrenheit. So that's plenty cool enough. As I said, this is a quite a slow moving recipe anyway. Besides being slow moving, another nice thing about this particular mixture of fats and oils is it has almost no inherent color to it. It would, it would make an almost pure white soap if you didn't color it with anything. When you use lard, you often notice that it um, turns slightly pink when you first start mixing it. That's because of a preservative that they put into the lard. I guess if you rendered your own, you wouldn't see that. But that'll go away. That is nicely emulsified, and so I'll pour my colors now. I'm going to try for approximately equal amounts of each color. The oil that I said I moistened the uh, colorants with came out of the amount in the recipe, so there, there won't be any extra oil because of that. Now these are going to need quite a lot of hand whisking, so I will either fast forward or edit some of that out. I have whisked these batters quite a lot more since I turned off the camera uh, several minutes, and they are not at trace yet, but they've developed a little bit of viscosity. So I'm going to pour them now, and um, as I've 
done recently with these cylinders. I'm just going to pour it right down against the central column and that will tend to uh, center the soap. Hopefully I can see what I'm doing and you can too. I'm going to be right up against the camera here. I'm going to try for a couple of tablespoons per pour. I realize the camera is probably not focusing on that bottom very well. Not sure what to do about that. This pouring method probably does not give, well definitely doesn't give, as perfect concentric symmetry as wood using squeeze bottles with an elongated snout on them from a cutoff pipette. Um, on the other hand, I'm not too worried if these are not terribly symmetrical, simply because in a real stained glass window, which is generally pictures, the colors are not symmetrical on those. So, maybe that's just an excuse for not going to the trouble of doing it the other way. But um, I'm not, at this point, regretting not doing that. Soup is just about to minimal trace right now. And at this point I'm going to start watching the amount of remaining batter in each pitcher in case I'm using more of one than the other. For example, it looks right now like I've got a little more green left than I do red, so I'll try to go a bit more heavy on the green and a little lighter on the red in the next couple of pours. I have not been counting how many times I've poured each of these, but the mold makes 10 bars, so I would like to do a little more than 10 cycles of color to be sure I'm getting some of every color nicely into each bar, and I think that's probably the case. I'm going to try to fill this mold right to the top. Of course, when I take the tool out, that will lower the level of the batter just slightly, but I'd like to get as much height out of it as I can. And I'm glad I made the 33 ounce batch. I think I'm going to need that. This will be the last of the yellow.
Now, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but that mold is truly full to the top. So now I'm going to pull the tool out carefully, trying to keep it straight and centered. Now, I will put the lid on that, and then I will hold it in a 55 Celsius or 131 degree Fahrenheit oven for several hours to let it harden up, and then cool it, and then we'll continue the process tomorrow. It is the next day, so my cylinder has hardened. I have it in the refrigerator right now to make it easier to get out of the mold, which I'll do in a few minutes. Uh, so now I'm going to prepare and pour the bottom of the rectangular mold. So I have my mixed oils here with the uh, fragrance oil and the um, black mica already in it. I have my lye water. These are both just above room temperature. My lye water already has the sugar and the sodium lactate in it. And so this should be really uh, quick just to mix these up and pour it. Got my gloves, duh. With this uh, frame recipe, I kind of wish I was using something that would trace a little quicker, but I think just for a good seal between the parts, I'd rather keep the recipe the same. So this is uh, going to be quite slow to thicken up. That's a good emulsion. I think I'm going to pour it now. So this is going to make a floor in the mold that is around half an inch thick, maybe a little bit less. Now I need to let this harden probably for a couple hours until it's thick enough or stiff, and stiff enough to hold the weight of that cylinder. I'm ready to unmold the cylinder. done before, I'm going to push it through with some old colorant bottles. Oh, I need to loosen it first. I don't know how well this will show up in the <clears throat> video, but if you push against these side veins, you can see the, uh, the soap loosening inside. So by using, doing that and also by using sodium lactate in the soap, there's usually no problem with getting it out of the mold. So there's the finished column, and that will go into the log mold as soon as that the uh, black base is hard enough. The black base has been curing now for a couple hours, so I'm ready to finish this soap. I have mixed the final recipe. It's exactly the same as the previous one black with frankincense and myrrh scent, but um, of course a larger recipe. And again, my oils and my lye are just a little above room temperature. It's still pretty thin, but I'm going to let it sit for a little while. Um, this 
cylinder pretty much exactly fits lengthwise into the mold. And it'll give about a quarter inch space on each side. So I don't want to just drop it in there. I think that base is still soft enough that that could be disastrous. So what I'm going to do instead is roll it in from the side so it just gently touches the bottom and then turn it upright and hopefully you can see that. Now to center it in the mold uh, sideways I'm going to prop it with a couple of chopsticks just to keep it from rolling to one side or the other as I fill it and then I'll pull the chopsticks out. I'm going to stir this a little more. It's developing just the tiniest bit of viscosity now. I don't want it to go all the way to trace, but I, I would like to feel a little bit of thickness here, a little more than I've got, but I think we're almost there. I'm sure that's lined up nicely, and that looks like it is. Remove the camera. I wish this quite a lot longer off camera. Um, it's still pretty thin, and I think that's good. I want it to fill in all the cracks. Well, there goes my chopstick. I also missed the mold at the back there. There, that's a really full mold at this point. Now, I'm going to just let that sit there for a few minutes until it stiffens up enough that I can actually move it safely. Then I'll carry it to the oven and uh, see pop it at uh, 55 Celsius, 131 Fahrenheit for a couple hours. But I think right now it's not safe to pick up and, and carry. The, the soap has cured overnight, and so it's ready to be unmolded and cut now. That's promising. Here are the finished soaps. Um, I like the window look. Uh, obviously my bottom layer of black ended up a different shade from my upper layer and I don't like that. I'm hoping as it cures and dries more that that'll become less visible but I'm pretty sure that'll never really go away. So I need to be more careful in future batches to uh, match those up pretty well. But I think it does give the impression of a stained glass window, which I like quite a lot.